Hey YouTubers. Have here a CZ82 that I purchased from AIM Surplus. CZ82 made in of course the uh, Czech Republic, actually Czechoslovakia. It's made in Czechoslovakia which no longer exists which is why this is a curio and relic. The CZ82 is the military version of the CZ83 which is the civilian version. CZ83 comes in a 9mm Makarov ammo and 380 and CZ83 you can still buy those new um, they are on the market. CZ82 here, this comes in 9mm, 9mm Makarov only since it is the military and police surplus pistol. Of course that's all the that's the only caliber they use. They never used 380. It comes with the holster and this one came with a second magazine which a lot of sources I found online only give you one. And here is a little cleaning rod and a little screwdriver on here. Fit in here. Got one guy online joking that you can put this on your belt and carry it. It's open carry, but it's also kind of concealed carry because this looks like some sort of tool belt. Nobody would ever guess that this is a handgun in here. They would think it's like a tool belt of or a tool pouch of some sort. So it's kind of like concealed open carry. Now, some people are under the impression that CZ stands for Czech, but it doesn't. It stands for, and I hope I get this pronouncement right, it is Cheska Zbrojovka, which means Czech Arms Factory. So the Seska, or Cheska, as you see it written, that does mean Czech, but CZ is not Czech. That's not what it stands for. Um, the CZ82 is as it is commonly referred its actual designation is CZ VZ82 VZ is a abbreviation for visor or model so it's the CZ model 82 that's the correct uh, designation for it the CZ82 was designed to replace the VZ52 pistol and replaced it in 1983 uh, the CZ82 is a compact, double action, semi-auto with blowback action. The blowback means that the barrel is fixed to the uh, receiver itself uh, so it doesn't rotate like in a 1911. The CZ82 weighs 28 ounces empty or 32 ounces loaded. It's 6.8 inches long. It's got a 3.8 inch barrel. Its thickness is 1.4 inches and its height is 5 inches. The benefit that I like about the CZ-52 as compared to some of the other um, 9mm Makarov ammo shooting pistols is that it has a allows you to carry it cocked and locked. The other ones are all have decockers on them. This one does not. It has a safety. But it allows you to carry it cocked and locked which if you are a 1911 shooter that's a huge benefit. It allows you, when, when you need something a little bit smaller than a 1911, it allows you to carry a handgun that has the same trigger and hammer manipulation as the 1911. The CZ-82 was the first service pistol to have ambidextrous controls. The magazine release and the safety are both ambidextrous. It has a large ejection port. It has a high cap magazine, which is 12 rounds plus one. And something else I really like about it is it has repeat strike capabilities. And I did clean this right before I started, so I know it's un so I know it's unloaded, but I'll just show you. And I, I think the pistols that have repeat strike capability, I think that's a really good feature. Um, 
I've had a few misfires. It seems like no matter what the cartridge company, most of my misfires have been from ammo that maybe the primer's a little bit strong or firing pin weak, who knows, for whatever reason, the firing pin strikes, but it doesn't go off. Um, that's probably 90% of the malfunctions I've had with a handgun. So for me, a repeat fire, and most of the ammo I've used has gone off on the second firing if I have that second fire capability. So that's a feature I like. The safety is a frame safety so that unlike a slide safety, when you're putting it in your holster, the slide will not move out of battery. Okay. It has a chrome plated bore which serves three purposes, longer barrel life, resistance to rust from corrosive ammo, and ease of cleaning. Now when you're shooting former com block pistols, the resistance to rust from corrosive ammo is important because if you shoot the Milserp ammo, you will still find some corrosive ammo out there. I've been a little bit leery of some of the ammo I've got, not for handguns, but actually for the 7.62x54R. I've been leery of some ammo that says non-corrosive, but I kind of question that. Looking historically at what was issued at the time, and I know that it's corrosive, kind of contradicts what the packaging says that it's non-corrosive. So for me, anything that's chrome plated, especially with the uh, former com block pistols or, or firearms, that's a definite plus. It has polygonal rifling in the barrel, which is different from lands and grooves, and it's supposed to give longer barrel life, and I've heard some people argue that it's more accurate also. And um, for us northerners up here, it's got an enlarged trigger guard, which I think is very, very important if you're somebody who uses gloves uh, during the winter or whatever. That's a, a big feature. I think it's a little bit more important than some people give it credit for. Uh, but like I said, it's from the perspective of a northerner. I did not find a lot of negatives to this handgun. Um, probably the most glaring negative to it is the mag release. I like the position of the mag release. It's where Americans are used to it. Not down here where Soviets and a lot of other Europeans put it or not up here like the Walther PPK, it's right where we like it. The problem is it's recessed so far into the grip, it's so deep um, because of the width of the grip that it's hard to get to. You actually, you, and I got pretty good sized mitts. You either have to rotate it, or what I've found pretty useful is to use your index finger on this side uh, to release it. Now we'll take this apart. And as I've shown before, it is empty. It's a little bit different than a Walther PPK or the Makarov in that you just pull this down and it clicks. That's all you have to do. You don't have to pull it down, pull it to the side or anything like that. Okay, and then from there, pull it back and lift up. And here's what you do. As you notice the bore access on here, if you look at it compared to the Walther PPK or the Makarov, it's a lot lower. And that's something that's kind of a signature with all CZ firearms is that the barrels are, have a low bore access. That allows for less muzzle flip and faster follow-up shots, faster and more accurate follow-up shots. The fit and finish on the inside here is not as good as it is on the outside. This is a utilitarian finish on the inside, I'd call it. Not so much as the Makarov, but it's, you know, it's not smooth, it hasn't been finished, you'll see machining marks. It's very functional. It's smooth where it needs to be smooth, where there's friction. But other than that, like I said, it's very functional. Reassembly, just the same, except backwards. And then you just push the trigger guard up. The trigger on this, um, it's consistent with what I've found that every other CZ firearm that I have fired has and that it is a excellent trigger. It's crisp, 
it's light, it feels light. I don't have a, a scale to measure trigger weight, but perception, it feels light. It's very crisp. Oops, <laughs> so I'll just take it off, save. It has a clean break, and it's excellent. Even in the double action, very good trigger. And it also has a short reset. So I, I have always had extremely good luck with CZ triggers that I have uh, of the guns I have fired. I think they all have excellent triggers. The sights on this, they are fixed sights, um, but they are really good sights. They're they're pretty modern. I mean, it's uh, two dots in back, a line in front. The accuracy on this is extremely good. I got excellent accuracy. So let me show you. Here is some Hornady Critical Critical Defense. In the 9mm Makarov. There are some other manufacturers out there that make it. As far as I know, this is the only American maker of self-defense ammo for it. Hornady's incredible critical defense. I do have some... Uh, here's some brown bear. It's just a full metal jacket. I do have some silver bear hollow points. There's drastic quality difference between the Silver Bear stuff and the Hornady stuff. Now you can get some really really good deals on a 9mm Makarov. It's 9x18. Uh, you can get some great deals online and, and in stores. You can buy a box of 50 for you know 10 bucks. There are a lot of differences between this and the Makarov and I'm gonna have a comparison video coming out to kind of show you those differences. I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of them now, um, just kind of the basics. Um, but there are quite a few differences between this. As the Makarov, the Russian Makarov, this is based off of the uh, Walther PPK design. A lot of times in stores people get confused. They'll think that this pistol is a 9mm Makarov because a lot of a lot of times a lot of stores when they print out their their tags that they put on these in the gun counter, it's computerized and it'll come out 9mm Makarov, but it's actually a very different design. It's not just the CZ's design or the Czech's design the same exact pistol. It's not the case at all. There's quite a few differences. As far as concealed carry goes, I think this is an excellent choice, especially for the price. Now there are some drawbacks to this as compared to some of the newer pistols. For one thing, it is an all steel design. Some of you like that, so for some people that's not a drawback at all. Some people like that extra weight of all steel. Um, I like both. I like polymer and steel, so for me, you know, that's not a huge difference. But weight wise, it is going to be heavier. Thickness. Um, most of it is fairly thin. Uh, it is, does have a th thicker grip. Some guys actually like the Makarov uh, as far as concealability, but the CZ82 with you know with a thicker grip, it is going to be a little bit more difficult uh, to keep it from printing. Um, I have not carried this very much. I've, I think I've only carried it maybe once or twice, uh, and that was only around the house just to kind of see how it did carry. Because like I said, today was the first time I've ever shot it, so I'm not going to carry it before shooting it. Uh, but just kind of carrying it around the house. I didn't really have a lot of issues. I think with the inside the waistband holsters, I don't holster. I don't think you're going to have an issue uh, with printing. One of the benefits to the blowback design is that the spring is around the barrel, so that cuts back. You don't have the thickness because you don't have the guide rod and the spring underneath it. So the slide, um, the upper area of the receiver, is going to be a lot thinner than the uh, a lot of the modern handguns. And to kind of give you a comparison. Here is my LC9, and this one here has uh, Crimson Trace on it, as you see. But size-wise, the CZ82 is a little bit longer, but it's also a little bit thinner on the muzzle. Grip thickness, it's uh, maybe slightly thinner going uh, width-wise, 
uh, but go, or going lengthwise, but going this way, it's uh, significantly thicker than the LC9. And it's also, as you see, the Magwell is a lot longer. However, this is a uh, seven shot, seven plus one, whereas this is 12.1. So you are getting five more rounds with this than you are with the LC9, even though you know that's smaller. So you could kind of decide for yourself what your trade-off is. Some people prefer to carry a little bit bigger gun if it gives them more ammo, and this definitely gives you more ammo. As far as uh, um, recoil goes, since this is heavier, it is a lot easier to manage than a smaller polymer 9mm. So, but then again, and also, you know, and I'm kind of loosely comparing it to the LC9 because as you know, this is a 9mm which has uh, substantially more power than a 9mm Makarov. So, that's that. So, excellent pistol and I would highly recommend AIM Surplus. They, um, about the same price as JG sales, but like I said, it gives you the second magazine. And um, I've worked with both of them. JG sales, I'm not going to knock them all. Excellent customer service. Excellent customer service. And AIM Surplus, uh, the same. Excellent customer service. I've talked to them on the phone, talked to them through email, all kinds of stuff. And stellar customer service. I give them an A+. So definitely check out AIM Surplus. And uh, put in an order for the CZ82. You will not regret it. I've wanted one of these for years, and it's kind of one of those things, it's like it's so cheap, I just always buy other stuff, but man, I, I after owning this, I, I waited too long, I should have bought one of these years ago. Excellent pistol. This right here is the bargain on the um, gun market right now for handguns, as far as I'm concerned. With the CNR FFL, you can have it shipped right to your house. Uh, you can get it for 220 bucks. There is no better value on the handgun market. And I've been saying for a long time the best rifle value on, on the rifle market is the Russian Mosin Nagant. Um, you can buy that for 100, 150 bucks. That is the best rifle value. This is the best handgun value. Um, I've got a couple Mosin Nagants. I know guys that collect, that buy those all the time just because they're so cheap. They won't always be like that once the surplus market clears up. And same thing with the CZ82. I know a lot of guys that are going out and buying, just, there's people that have dozens of them, uh, just because they're so cheap and they won't always be like that. So this is the bargain on the market. If you don't have one yet, you have to go out and get one. And I stress, you have to go out and get one. And once you buy one, you're probably gonna buy more than one. I know I am. For me, it's only a matter of time before I go out and buy another one. CZ83 is the Russian Brown Bear XTP uh, hollow point ammo. <laughs> 